What's up guys and what's up new players? My name is Eric Psychic and welcome to the wonderful game of Tibia. There's so much to this game that I could talk about that this video could easily reach an hour or longer, but I know no one wants to sit here for that long so I'm going to make this video as short as I can. Instead of going over every little detail of Tibia, I'm going to talk about the fun and important stuff to help you get a feel for the game and then the rest is up to you. So I'm going to assume you already have an account and you already have a character created on a world of your choosing. If so, when you first log in, you'll be in an area known as Dawnport. Dawnport is the beginner tutorial for all new players, the updated version of the former area known as Rookguard. In Dawnport, you'll get to try out the four vocations of Tibia and slay your first monsters as you get a basic feel for the game. For those of you on the regular client, you move in Tibia by pressing your arrow keys, or if you're watching this after the release of Tibia 11, you can also move with WASD. In the interest of keeping this video short, I'm not going to go over the entire interface. Instead, I'll point you guys to some resources to help you learn about the game. If you hit Ctrl and H while in game, a magnifying glass will pop up. If you hover over particular things in the game window or the interface, a tooltip will pop up that will explain the object you're looking at in greater detail. In Dawnport, you can also speak to an NPC named Anigo who has a ton of different topics you can talk to him about. Finally, if you have more questions, you can also consult the manual on Tibia.com under Game Guide. So back to Dawnport. On Dawnport, your goal is to reach level 8 so you can head to the mainland where you'll find everyone else. In order to reach level 8, you just need to kill anything and everything you see and you'll quickly advance levels. On Dawnport, you can try out each of the four vocations, Knight, Paladin, Sorcerer, and Druid. In order to try a vocation, simply walk through the pedestals on any side of the building and your outfit, armor, and inventory will be changed to a beginner set of that vocation. Each vocation in Tibia has a unique playstyle with its own arsenal of spells. To cast a spell, you'll need to know its incantation or the words you say in order to cast the spell. To find what spells your vocation can use, just use any spellbook you see lying on the ground or walk through the southern or western exits to get one temporarily. In the mainland, you can purchase a spellbook later on, or you can just use Tibia fan sites like TibiaWiki.com in order to look up spells for your vocation and their words. Typing spells by hand wastes time and is inefficient, so for regular hunting, you're going to want to make a hotkey. To bring up your hotkeys menu, hit Ctrl and K. The beginning of the menu is all UI hotkeys, so scroll down until you see the red line to add a new hotkey. Click on the red line, type the words to the spell like Exura and Fur, which is for the magic patch healing spell, then click the box next to it to set the spell to a particular key. Check the send automatically box after that, and every time you hit that particular key, your character will cast the spell. I highly recommend looking into a gaming mouse if you're serious about playing Tibia, but now thanks to the Tibia 11 client, you can also remap some of your spells to other keys on your keyboard if you can't afford a gaming mouse. I still recommend one though, because it makes movement easier when you have your spells on your right hand. For now, you'll most likely be attacking monsters by left clicking them if you're using the left smart click on the Tibia 11 client. If you're using regular controls, you can hold Alt and click them or click their name on the battle list, and if you're using classic controls, you can attack a monster by right clicking it. These controls can be changed in the options menu under mouse preset. Now you're free to roam around Dawnport and kill monsters. If you're a sorcerer or druid and run out of mana, you can use your mana potions to refill your mana and cast more attack and healing spells. These potions can be hotkeyed to use on self by selecting the object and ticking the use on self button in the hotkeys menu. If you're a knight or paladin, you can use health potions to restore health as well as mana potions to cast healing spells. Keep hunting monsters and once you reach level 8, you're now able to go to the mainland where you'll be able to meet up with everyone else from the game. Head downstairs from the main area and talk to Aressa where you'll decide on your permanent vocation. Before heading through a vocation's door, make sure you walk through their pedestals upstairs. So if you want to be a knight, make sure you walk through the pedestals to the north or you won't have your knight beginner spells when you head to the mainland. Choosing your vocation is a big decision and you're probably wondering what each vocation looks like down the road. The knight is a powerful warrior, specialized in fighting close combat with his axe, club, or sword. High level knights hunt monsters by launching themselves into crowds of them and rotating through their berserk spells to kill them all at once. Once hunting this way gets too slow or if the knight can find a druid friend, they can start to team hunt different spawns. Team hunting is one of the fastest ways to get experience in the game and it's also a very efficient way to hunt so you come out with a lot of profit. A team hunt can consist of 2-4 to four players and at high levels sometimes even 5 or possibly 6 for extra damage. At the minimum, a team hunt consists of a knight and druid with a sorcerer and paladin added in for extra damage and utility. In PvP, knights are the tanks that fill the gaps between teams because otherwise there would be magic walls blocking their team's vision. The knight's finishing move is called Annihilation and it only requires the knight to be within melee range of its target. Knights have so much health that it usually takes a full team of players to headshot one and if they can't headshot the knight, their only choice is to outdamage his healing from potions, which is quite high. 
If the knight has another player nearby to heal them, killing them can be next to impossible. It's usually easier to kill the healer than it is to kill the knight. Unfortunately, solo knights usually get burnt out around level 200 where the experience from hunting by yourself starts to slow down compared to the amount you need, so if you're more of a lone wolf and don't see yourself team hunting much, you should try the paladin vocation. Paladins are holy rangers whose main fighting style is from a distance with bows, crossbows, throwing stars, and other ranged weapons. Their bolts or arrows can hit very hard, and they are masters of single target hunting. Ammunition for a paladin is cheap too, so these holy snipers usually come out of their hunts with a lot of money. Paladins can also hunt groups of monsters, but not as efficiently because they are limited in their area attacks. In a team hunt, some paladins switch to burst arrows which allow them to shoot a monster while hitting the others around it with an explosion. They also have their Divine Caldera, which launches a ring of holy damage around them. Paladins are great for players looking to hunt by themselves efficiently or provide some support in a team. They can also be a great off-tank in hunts where there are more than 8 monsters in a single room. Many players regard paladins as a useless vocation because they don't have great specialization in anything besides single target hunting, but they're actually the most versatile vocation because of their ability to off-tank, provide damage and support, etc. Paladins are the jack of all trades. In PvP, an experienced paladin can provide a lot of support in different ways to a team. When there are gaps and not enough knights, paladins can fill the gaps like knights since they have comparable health and can even use their large mana pool as extra health similar to a mage if they expect they're about to be comboed. Their passive ranged attack can also be used to target an enemy healer to keep them constantly on their toes worried about their mana. There's a lot more to a paladin than most people see, so don't let people tell you this vocation is bad just because it's one of the slower solo hunters. If you like the idea of solo hunting and dealing damage, but don't mind trading your versatility for some extra damage, then you'd probably enjoy being a sorcerer. Sorcerers are masters of the fire and energy element, and they can deal a whole lot of damage with their pool of magical attacks. You'll usually find a sorcerer ripping through spawns by himself, or dealing damage in a team hunt. Sorcerers are perfect for players who want to hit really hard, don't want a lot of responsibility in team hunts since they just focus on damage, and prefer fire and energy. They also have a lot of other spells too, like Strong Haste, which allows them to move fast, summon creature to create monsters that can deal extra damage, and they can use a magic shield that allows them to turn their large mana pool into health. In PvP, sorcerers are known for their ultimate explosion attack, Hell's Core. This spell is a great finishing move due to its reliability and hitting high damage. Sorcerers also have decent protection to the death element, which makes them pretty tanky to sudden death runes, which are runes used by mages to kill another player. Sorcerers are still the opposite of a knight though, and can be quite fragile, so in war you'll usually see the sorcerers and their druid counterpart being picked off first. Those who like sorcerers but want to be able to heal their friends, deal damage, and prefer the ice and earth element should consider being a druid. Druids are the more versatile version of a sorcerer. They provide amazing support through their ability to heal friends and paralyze enemies, and can deal practically the same amount of damage as a sorcerer with their ice and earth waves. They can also cast haste and summon spells as well. They're essential to team hunting, so if you're playing with a group of friends, you'll need a druid in your party. In PvP, druids are just like sorcerers except they are usually tasked with healing the team, paralyzing enemies trying to run away, and they also have their own ultimate explosion attack known as Eternal Winter. This spell can hit practically as hard as Hell's Core, but it's less reliable which gives sorcerers the slight edge when it comes to combos. So after hearing all that, hopefully you will be able to decide which vocation you want to be. Keep in mind there's a lot more to each vocation than just that, I just wanted to give you a brief summary so as not to overwhelm you. Every vocation has its pros and cons, and if you really don't like your choice, you can always create a new character. The second time around, leveling is always much easier. Once you've decided on your permanent vocation, head through the door of the one you chose, grab your new equipment from the chest, and you're ready to head to the mainland. When talking to Captain Dreadnought on the boat, she's going to try to persuade you to go to Venor. You can go there if you'd like, there's a little newbie questline you can do for some starting money, but there are other towns you can go to as well. Rather than overwhelm you with all the towns you can go to, I'll list the towns I think are best for new players and point you to some of the starting hunting spawns you can try out. I'm going to be brief on the spawns, so you can pause the video if you see one you like and hopefully the map will give you an idea on how to get there. Keep in mind when you are brought to the mainland you'll be on a boat and right off each town's boat is a guide NPC. You can talk to this guide and have them mark your mini-map with the shops around town, escort you to the depot where you can store your items, and more. I'll start with the free account towns. So Venor, the city the captain is trying to persuade you to go to, is a city built on top of a swamp. You can exit the town through its northwest, southwest, and south gate, and there's also a building to the east that will bring you out to the main swamp area. New players fresh out of Dawnport can hunt the various monsters around the swamps, the rotworms which live in a cave to the east, the swamp trolls underground to the south, and the salamander cave just a little northwest outside Venor's southern gate. 
The next free account city is Thighs. Thighs is my favorite city in the game and it's kind of a central hub in Tibia. If there's any town that will have players in it, it's Thighs and that's because of its accessibility from Rashamul, a higher level hunting ground, and the fact that it is home to the Inquisition Blessing which high levels use to protect their items. It was also the first city added to the game so it's quite nostalgic for most players. The high population of Thighs is a good thing for new players who need help from other players but remember that if you're on a PvP world, Thighs is also the home to many PKers. To the east of Thighs you'll find some trolls on the surface and their home underground. To the far south you'll find a minotaur and cyclops camp. To the north is the entrance to the ancient temple where you'll find orcs, rotworms, and tons of other monsters. And to the north of that is another entrance to a cave network filled with snakes, trolls, and more. To the northeast of Thighs is a huge mountain known as Mount Sternum and it's home to the cyclops. I would stay away from the cyclops unless you're a paladin or druid that knows how to keep your distance on them because they can hit really hard on low level players. Knights and sorcerers should stick to the trolls and orcs. For premium cities, I think Edron has to be the best for new players. It's a little tricky to find the spawns, but if you head south of the depot down a ladder and through the sewers, you'll appear on the other side in a grassy field. To the north is a cave filled with trolls, and to the south is another cave filled with goblins. There's also another sewer grate in town you can travel through that will bring you to an area filled with orcs. Duratia is another premium city located in the middle of a desert that is great for new players. To the far north you'll find a pyramid with minotaurs on it. Minotaurs are great monsters to hunt for new players because they drop a lot of weapons and armor which can be sold back in town for gold. You'll also find some rotworm caves to the north and west of the town which can be tricky to find but they're out there. You'll need a shovel to open the holes to the caves and a rope to get back up when you want to leave. Also keep in mind that some spawns will have monsters that drop food, but others won't. You'll always want to eat food until you're full so that your health and mana will regenerate. To the south of Duratia you'll find Ankerman. In the desert around Ankerman are larva caves and tombs. Larvas are a little harder than rotworms since they poison you, but the tombs are great places to go for new players to hunt skeletons and other undead monsters. Just beware of the lower floors where more difficult monsters hide. You'll want to stick to the top floors where it's just ghouls and skeletons. Remember to bring food with you to tombs because a lot of the monsters are undead and they don't drop food on death. To find a tomb, just look for a grey dot on the minimap while on the desert and keep digging with a shovel until a hole appears. There are only a few tombs though and they're usually located around specific areas, not just randomly in the desert, so make sure you're digging in the right spot. To the west of Ankerman is Port Hope, another good city for beginners. In Port Hope you'll find a swamp troll cave through a hole on the east side of town, a crocodile cave to the north, and also tons of little monsters scattered throughout the jungle. So these are the towns I recommend going to, but they aren't the only towns in the game. Captain Dreadnought will persuade you to go to Venor, so if you want to go to one of the other cities you just need to tell her no and say the name of the different city instead. While hunting monsters, you may find yourself getting hit by an unlucky combo or running out of potions. If you die in Tibia, you'll receive a death penalty of experience and skill loss. This may seem devastating when you're new, but believe me that we are all still playing this game even with the death penalty. It's one of the things that makes Tibia unique because you can't just rush through things that are too difficult for you. It also makes PvP that much more exciting when you actually have something to lose. When you first start out, you'll drop your backpack and possibly your weapon or armor when you die, but once you get some money, you can purchase blessings that will protect your items and reduce your death penalty. There's more to Tibia than just hunting though. You can tame a mount which increases your movement speed by 10 levels by obtaining a particular item and using it on its respective monster. You can collect pieces to an outfit or its add-ons to change the way you look. You can collect achievements to get higher on the high scores, and you can even rent a house which you can then decorate with rare items you've looted for other players to see. You could also form a guild with your friends and rent out a guild hall, which is like 5 or 10 times the size of a normal house. With that guild or group of friends, you could take on some of the ultimate quests, like the Inquisition, where you slay the minions of the Ruthless Seven in order to get some new powerful equipment. Or if you and your friends get into an argument with another group of players, you can even attack and kill them depending on your world's PvP system. So now you know the starting area Dawnport, what the vocations are, and some good towns for you to choose when you start your journey in Tibia. I didn't go into huge depth on all the vocations, and there are more towns out there in Tibia than just what I listed. These ones just happen to be the best ones for new players in my opinion, so you're going to have to explore the rest of the world as you gain levels. But that's the fun part about Tibia. There's so much just in the map of this game, and as you explore you'll find new monsters to hunt, new quests to do, new areas to explore, and more. Hopefully you know now whether or not you want to give Tibia a try, and believe me when I say Tibia is a very unique MMO. Most of us have been playing for years, myself off and on for 13 years now, and there's a reason for that. There's no other game quite like Tibia. Plus, you can play for free, and while it's not as fun as being premium, you can buy a 10 day premium account trial once for only $3. If you don't like Tibia after 10 days, then you really didn't lose much. 
Alright guys, hopefully this guide helped some of you new players. I'm sure you still have some questions, so if you need, you can always ask in a comment. Or if you need in-game help, you can always try your world's English chat or help channel by hitting Control o and opening the channel. I tried to be brief in this video. I know there's a ton of topics I didn't even touch upon, so maybe I'll make more videos on those topics in the future. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.